first of all by uh, giving you an example of the, the the demonstration that Ben's just made, which I think just speaks straight to the example or the, the concept of a technology passport that we spoke about earlier. Um, a consistent set of information that can be provided by a technology developer to an investor or a funder to say, this is the stage of my development. These are the metrics I've achieved so far. This is my justification of the process I've been through, uh, the results I've achieved. Um, and this is this is where I think we, we are and where we need to go next. So a technology passport, I think, would would include a lot more detailed work and uh, content in the future. But that report that the StageGate tool can output now is a really good example of, a, of the consistency that we'd be trying to achieve, or the international community would be trying to achieve by demonstrating that. And that's, as I said, of benefit to technology developers and the funders and investors, both sides of that transaction. So now I just want to go back to the slide that I showed you at the beginning, which gave you a bit of concept, context of uh, how these tools sit alongside uh, the technology development process. Um, and then just kind of bring back some of those examples we discussed as we went along. So start off, Core Power, Tech, Core Power Ocean and developing their wave energy technology. They, they, at the early stages, wanted to identify funding programs. They needed to use the, the activity checklist to say, what is the international community or this particular funding body expecting? Uh, in, in each of the stages of their program and which one of them is most applicable to me. Um, use those that expectation to plan the activities of their proposal into a funding scheme, but also their engineering project that follows. Then they can continue to receive guidance from that as they go through the technology development process, through the different stages of their own development and through different funding schemes in different countries. Um, so they're all the way through receiving guidance and, and using that kind of self-assessment self capability of the StageGate tool. Then perhaps you'd move on to a company like Orbital Marine or Sabella, both developing tidal energy solutions. Both have been through a few iterations of their technology as they progress to larger scale um, and, uh, and higher technological maturity. They're developing that technology. They're using the capabilities of the StageGate tool, the technology passport idea uh, to demonstrate progress to future investors. And all the way through, at whatever stage of their technology development life, they can use the tool to identify improvement areas initially in the StageGate tool, but then into the real detail of it in the, in the structured innovation tool. And then we get right back onto the top half of this diagram where we meet up with the with the investors. So I've used uh, the European Commission. Um, the European Commission has just released a program called Europe Wave, which takes a three stage process to development of wave energy technologies. Um, and the Wave Energy Scotland program from our own, uh, from our own experience, we're looking to identify those improvement areas, engage with uh, the international consensus on the, the support that's required to respond to those improvement areas. Um, and other examples of those include ETIP in the European Commission, uh, the European Technology Innovation Platform, which tries to uh, prioritize which areas of innovation are uh, most appropriate for support from funders and the Horizon and the, in the European Commission's funding and innovation programs um, are good examples of those. And then Wave Energy Scotland and the European Commission would use that knowledge to divine, define their funding schemes, design their, their funding schemes to say, these are the engineering activities uh, that we expect you to deliver in these stages of a project. Um, and at that point, there's, a, there's an interesting playoff between what the expectation is for engineering activities and what the funding is available. So the recommendations of the Internationally Energy Agency Ocean Energy Systems Framework uh, are really valuable to have consensus on what's expected at each stages. But each individual funder needs to work out how can we deliver that uh, in our funding schemes with the funding we have available, uh, which is uh, sometimes an interesting playoff. So once that funding scheme's de de designed, uh, the the content of that OES framework and the suite of DT Ocean Plus tools can actually be involved in the evaluation and the selection of those technologies, whether it be using the question and answer facility that, that Ben's demonstrated, um, as well as using the consistent assessment method 
that uh, that this full suite of tools provides. Uh, so both of those things help to effectively close this this loop between technology developers and funders by bringing in the the consensus, bringing in the, the, the consistent expectation that's provided by the OES framework, um, but also bringing in the uh, the full stage gate assessment and the use of those deployment and assessment tools consistently, so that you can make really good strong comparisons between different funders. Sorry, between different technology developers, and decide which funder, which technology developers are most appropriate for your funding scheme. So hopefully that gives uh, a good explanation of both the context. Uh, the, you've seen the, some of the functionalities of the StageGate tools demonstrator, and you can see some of the ways that the StageGate tool links in to the uh, the rest of the suite of DT Ocean Plus tools, which, when all used together, provides this really consistent thread of, of assessment and, and design experience. And the overall purpose, um, the overall purpose of the of the tool set particularly the StageGate design tool being to provide guidance, provide the, the consistent evaluation, uh, improve people's decision-making uh, based on the best information and the most common uh, common information across different countries um, and, and lead into this concept that OES is looking at um, of the technology passport to help help that relationship between funders and technology developers. And with that, I'll pass back to Gillian. Thank you, Jonathan. That was a really good way of uh, bringing it all together um, and hopefully giving everyone some context on how um, this relates to the kind of real life assessments that we see.